Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to continue on on the little series I started last week on threading on the import lathes. Now if you recall last in the previous video we went through a detailed explanation of change gears and how you go about changing them from the standard feed selection which was on the the top of our legend here to the uh, imperial threading uh, inches uh, threads per inch. We went through that then we went through actually putting the uh, feed gears back in. If you haven't seen that video I do encourage you to watch it. Uh, it's, if you've got any kind of lathe that uses change gears uh, it may not work exactly like this per Precision Matthews does but chances are it'll be very close uh, and the the theory behind it and the logic behind it is the same but to continue in that series today we're going to take this uh, 5 8 11 nut and turn a piece of coal roll uh, thread it to match this nut now if you were to take a regular 5 8 bolt 5 8 is 625 thousandths and if you were to take a 5 8 bolt and put your mics on it or your calipers on it you would find that it, this is a little less than 625 thousandths this one's about 615 thousandths so about 10 thousandths smaller but we're going to start with a piece of 5 8 material and I'm going to try to go through all the logic of uh, or all the setup required and the readings required uh, on the compound and the cross slide to get the threads cut on that. So let's quickly put our 10 threads, uh, 10 TPI change gears back in the box. All right, we've got our change gears set up, and if you recall from the last week's video, I told you about having this little notebook that I keep my various information regarding threading in. And one of the things I have in that is my checklist. Now, we just did the uh, proper change gears installed. We selected our speed. We selected threading versus turning and I made a test pass to be sure we were at 10 threads per inch and chances are you will have it done ahead of time but I probably should put a step in there uh, saying prep your workpiece now you can do some workpiece prepping after the change gear is installed as long as it doesn't involve turning Remember, we're stepping much faster uh, spacing in between each revolution than we would be uh, if we had the regular feed gears in. But what I need to do with this is face it, uh, put a little chamfer on this end down here for the thread to lead in, and cut some thread relief. So let's face this all first. Now we want to cut a little thread relief 
How much, how deep do you need to cut your thread relief? We're doing 11 threads per inch here, and if you look on your threading fishtail, hopefully you got one of these. If you don't, or if yours don't have the double depth uh, table on it, check online, check your machinery's handbook. But 11 threads per inch says 118 thousandths is the double depth of the thread. Half of that would be 59 thousandths. So we need 59 thousandths on each side, which again, double depth is 118 thousandths. So I'll take my parting tool and line it up with that witness mark. It read 118 thousandths on my dial down here and also on the DRO, but it only traveled half of that. We took 118 thousandths off the diameter, which is 59 on each side. All right, so now let's go back to our threading checklist. It says set the compound at the correct angle and the quick change tool post square to the workpiece. Now I'm going to show you how to do those two steps, setting the compound at the correct angle and the quick change tool post square with the workpiece. I'm going to show you how to do that in one step. You need a simple protractor here. Set it on 29 and a half degrees. Why 29 and a half degrees? Well, we're cutting 60 degree threads, which half of that is, of course, 30. If we could set our compound at exactly 30 degrees, we would be fine. We don't want to go over 30 degrees. Let me try to explain very briefly why. This is a larger threading tool here. Get it over where there's a background, maybe. I'm going to try to get a contrasting background here. But as we're threading, we're not going to advance this tool straight in. We're going to advance it in at an angle like this. That's why we're going to set our, our compound at 30 degrees. And we're going to be setting this, or we're going to set our compound at 29 and a half degree to cut that 30 degree pitch in there. So we're going to be advancing in this way. Again, if we're setting at exactly 30 degrees, we will be cutting with all of this edge over here. If we go over 30 degrees a little bit as we're advancing that in, we're going to be trying to cut with the heel down here. We want to start our cut with the point. So we back off a half a degree, and as we're going in, we're going to be cutting with this side ever what the depth of the thread is, but we're going to be advancing in, and at 29 and a half degrees, that point is going to hit first instead of the heel. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So we've got our little protractor set at 29 and a half degrees. Now let's loosen just a quick change tool post. We'll put this protractor up against the edge of the compound. We're at this edge and up against this arm. So our quick change tool post is at 29 and a half degrees in relation to the compound. Now we want to get the compound set at the correct angle, the 29 and a half degrees. So all we need to do there, loosen our compound and swing it so that it's square with the workpiece. 
All right, in this case, I don't have enough of the workpiece sticking out. It's perfectly fine to take the workpiece out of the truck, put a longer piece of material in to do this, this step. Getting that compound at the correct angle is very important if you're going to use that style of threading. Now we tighten this back down. And if you're able to see that protractor that's up underneath your compound, which on many lays it's hard to see, but it should be just shy of 30 degrees, and it is. So in one step, or in the step, we've taken care of two steps here. First off, we used this little protractor to get the quick change tool post at 29 and a half degrees relative to the compound. Then we swung the compound around so that it's square with the workpiece or perpendicular to the workpiece, whichever side you want to look at. All right, so we've got the compound set at the correct angle. We've got the quick change tool post square to the workpiece. Now we want our cross slide handle, this down here, we want the handle at the bottom and zeroed. And we want our compound touched off and zero. So we'll put our threading tool back in now, or we'll put it in to begin with. And I just I want to get it close on the cross slide, being sure to take any slack or any backlash out. So I've got this close now. And my handle, my cross slide handle is at the bottom. I'll set the dial to zero. And I'm going to zero out the x-axis on the DRO in the event that I spin this handle more than one turn. I know that I'm coming back to the correct zero here. So that's at the bottom and zero. The next thing on our checklist said to set the compound to touch it off which is right there and I'm going to set the dial on that to zero. Now from this point on what we're going to be doing is engaging our half nuts. The handle right here to engage the half nuts we're going to engage it on one of these numbers. Now this may differ on your lathe. There's a um, little chart. It's actually on the back of the uh, back panel, splash panel on the lathe on mine. There's nothing in the manual about it. But this little picture right here shows us threading on this particular lathe. And at 8 threads per inch, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48, 56. That's all the various pitches, uh, imperial pitches, that this lathe will cut. And that, as you can see in this picture right here, it says we can engage on any number, 1 through 4. There are, there are, of course, four numbers on here, one, two, three, and four. What that means, though, we don't engage in between any of the numbers. We wait for a number to come around, any one of the numbers to come around, and we engage on that. Once we engage the half nuts, we'll engage in those, we'll start the lathe feeding in. Once we get to this relief right here, we're going to disengage the half nuts, back the cross slide off, bring it back down here, advance the cross slide back to zero, and then change our compound. This is going to be the key to getting the threads cut, is moving this compound. Remember I showed you how we're 
advancing that tool at an angle. And that angle, of course, is at 29 and a half degrees. Now, how much do we advance this? The formula that I use is 750, a constant, 750 divided by whatever threads per inch I'm going to be cutting, in this case 11. That gives us the number of 68.2. All we're interested in is the 68. So I'm going to put that little number right there, 68. Just as a reminder, that's what we want to read on this dial as we advance in. Now, if we set a compound, I'm sorry, not a compound, if we set a dial indicator back here reading against this, when we see that 68 on this, we're going to see what over here? We're going to see half the double depth of the thread, which would be 59 thousandths. Remember, this is going on the hypotenuse of the triangle, so it's going to be a little bit more. That's why I use 750. If you don't believe me, try it sometime. You don't have to do change gears or anything. Set you a, uh, well, let's do it. It will be within a couple of thousands. All right, I'm going to advance this to where this now will read 68 thousandths. This should read about 59 thousandths, within a couple thousandths. There's 68 on this dial. Can you see what that's reading? Whoops, I bumped it. That's reading 58 thousandths. That's within one thousandths of being the half the depth of the thread, or the depth of the thread. Remember, double depth was 118, half that is 59. That's why I use 750 as the constant. There are other constants that people use that will get you close, but I found that 750 will get you just about as, as close as you can possibly hope to get on uh, a machine like this or any lathe cutting threads. Okay, enough talk. All right, we've gone through the checklist. We've touched off. Uh, we've got this closed with the handle at the bottom. We've touched off here and said zero. Again, I like if you've got a DRO on your machine, I like to zero that out so that we know we're at the right spot. And if you wanted to use that indicator back here, now would be the time to set that up. All right. I like to engage my half nuts where I got a little distance over here in the event that I miss a number and engage in between one of the numbers. I've got time to disengage the half nuts and start over. I'm turning about 145 RPM here. You don't want you don't want it to be so slow that you stall the machine out, but you want your RPMs, you don't want them to be so fast that you can't disengage. All we're interested in, first off, is disengaging. So let's watch for a number. Okay. Back off. I'll show you what I'm doing here in slow motion in just a second, or not in slow motion. I'm going to advance this about oh, five thousandths here. I brought this back to zero. We'll wait for a number to come around. Engage. Disengage the half nut. We can sit right here and get all of our thoughts together. Uh, we're not going to damage anything by letting it sit there and run. I'm going to switch off just a second because I want to put my hand in here. If you'll notice from this, with this top camera, or the camera the image that you're hopefully you're seeing in your upper right hand corner of your screen, hopefully it's zoomed in enough that you can see that this 
cutting tool here, which is simply a smaller representation of the same thing right here. They've got both the same angles on them, and this would work just fine to cut these threads with. I just like look, using the insert tools. But you should note we're cutting with that edge over here. We're not going straight in and cutting with the entire point. All right, so now that we've made that pass, down here on the cross line, I'm going to back up, you know, whatever, just to be sure that clears. We'll move this back here. Bring the cross slide back into zero. And if I got happy and spun that handle a, a couple times here, that zero on the DRO is going to be sure I stop at the right zero getting it back in place. All right, let's go another five thousandths. And I'm going to start using a little bit of oil on now. We'll wait for a number to come around. Any number. Engage. Disengage. Back off the cross slide. Cross slide back to position. Back to zero. Advance the compound. And we're looking to advance to 68 degrees. 68 thousandths. When we get to that, or maybe even just a little bit before, we'll test fit our nut. Most likely, we will have to go just a little bit more than that, simply because this workpiece was the full uh, 625 thousandths. All right, number down here. I'm advancing the compound 5 thousandths at a time. I might could do a little bit more, but I'm not looking to stall the machine any. And I want to cut a good clean thread if I can. Obviously, the deeper we get in on that thread, the more, uh, the more cut it's going to be making. We're moving up on that point, but we're still feeding at our angle. All right, I'm starting to hear just a little bit of a strain. Nowhere near stalling the machine yet, but I'm going to up my RPMs just a little bit. Once you got this rhythm down of what we're doing here, then you can you can up your RPMs a little bit without a problem. Now I'm going to make what's called a spring pass now. I'm not going to advance the compound any, but no matter how rigid your tool post may be, or even how rigid the material is, there's a possibility that there's a little bit of spring happening there. And so if you make a spring pass, what that'll do is give the opportunity for everything to catch up. See, it still moved a little bit of material. We moved a little bit of material in that. All right, we're getting close now. This is 65 on the compound. So after we make this pass and one spring pass, we'll uh, 
we'll check our depth or check our nut. Spring pass. Got the compound back in position now, but I'm not going to advance this until we do it uh, just a, a test fit here. And you might want to take your file and just knock a little bit of the ridge off, off the top of the thread a little bit. Not quite there yet. We're going to take a very slowly, but we're going to take a little bit more at a time. So we'll take the other three thousandths that our math called for to the exact 68. And at this point in the game, we're going to pretty much make a spring pass between each cut. And we'll part this back at zero. Almost. All right, we're going to take two more thousandths over here. You remember I said that this workpiece was a full five eighths which is almost 10 thousandths bigger than the material. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 thousandths bigger than a 5 eighths bolt off the shelf bolt. So we may have to take several more passes through here. That's just a few more thousandths there. Now, if you've got thread wires or a thread micrometer or any of the other advanced threading tools, you could keep cutting until you uh, reach your desired mark with the wires or the uh, thread micrometer. Absolutely nothing wrong with just doing a test fit on a nut. And that's trying to advance a little more as it goes. We'll take a few more thousandths. I almost wish I'd give a little bit more of a champer on this on this workpiece before I started. But we're gonna get it. Alright, that's going about two full turns before it binds now, so we're getting real close.
I'm just making a couple spring passes now just to be sure everything is cleaned out. My hands are oily, but that's going on there with very little resistance. The resistance I'm getting is our burrs that's on it. That went over that burr. And hopefully you can see down here. Well, let me say one more thing about this uh, uh, using a threaded insert. 10 TPI is pretty much the max I can do on this size insert right here. I was getting almost to the point where I was bottoming out, bottoming out that point. So you don't run into that situation if you're cutting uh higher threads per inch such as a you know 12 15 or like a quarter 20 you wouldn't get near as many uh wouldn't go near as deep as i had to with this that's looking good though it's fitting on there fine as with any fresh cut thread probably again want to knock that top off, top of those threads just a little bit. That'll remove most of the burrs. If you have a wire brush close by, in this case a brass one, that doesn't help or doesn't hurt to clean them out that way either. All right, I think we're done with the thread cutting. So let's go back to the workbench and do just a quick little recap. 